Hello and welcome to this week's vlog. So, I don't know if you can hear me, but I'm just doing some cleaning out. In a minute, I think we're going to film Dave's Five Facts Friday. Perfect conditions for working today, really windy, and there's scary things. The man's repairing the wall, his car's there, the tractor of the gardeners is around the corner. But he's a little bit keen on his appetite, so it'll be interesting to see if he behaves better than last time. Just let him play. And we're going to give him a bit of time to see if he behaves now, he's had a bit more retraining. Let's see whether the buzzards push him down or not. just in the best flying absolutely ever for for months absolutely times like that you just think that's why i'm flying birds of prey jaw dropping master of the wind and even really kept those buzzers in check that normally frighten the life out of him he was up there high up rolling over flashing his talons and saying you press home that attack it's going to come to blows good to see him being a bit manning up a little bit because normally the buzzards that weigh a tiny percentage of his weight when they're defending their nests, they clobber him usually. So you don't know if you just noticed he was dribbling. So vultures and eagles really salivate, just like a dog, even at the thought there's food coming around. And he's just had all his dinner and actually dribbling like a puppy dog. So thrilled to see Wurzel doing exactly, exactly what he's designed to do. Soar and be a master, a master of the wind. So we're at Icarus. Um... I think there's a film crew coming today. It's really, really hot. So I'm going to get the tortoises and put them out. Shall when you're about to emerge. Yep. Just there, just come forward on the mic a little bit, please, Dave. Oh, That's yeah. good for me, running up, and just make sure he doesn't cover up your face if you're holding something, something like yeah. that, so he's a little bit to the side, yeah. I was keeping that two metres, so we'll make sure there's plenty of us here keeping an eye, so we can tell favourite bird or something. Guys, you've got to keep that two metres distance, but the signage should send them round. And the there, right, so ignore the camera, so we're there, okay. and when you give it a, if you give it a good 10 seconds... Can I just say, one when it's coming to land, how much, how much can I, I might need a bit of moving around the space. Is that, yeah, don't worry. Is that right? Do Visitors coming won't be able to go inside, but one of the big attractions is the falconry display. Oh, <laughs> I tried to snatch the food then. Oh, <laughs> I tried to snatch the food then. What was it like being on TV, Dad? Being on TV? I'm used to it. Were well, you filming these ready vlogs every week, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> we dig in this heat is hard work. That was killer today in the heat. We're finally done. A little update on the wildlife pond, stroke photography pond. It's looking good. Stays a little more natural. Okay. 
So I've got quite a lot of pond weed in there at the moment because that's going to eat up all the nutrients in there rapidly, which will clear the water because right now the algae is feasting on the nutrients. It was topped up from a hose, which means lots of nitrate probably nowadays, feeding the plants. And you can see blanket weed algae in there as well as just green water algae. And another plant that will help starve it out because of starve the algae of light. There'll be this beautiful lily. Thanks dad for your donation there. Very pretty. And already there's so much life here. Some of it will have come in with the pond weed that I transplanted and some on its own. And look at these amazing flies. The males have beautiful coloured tips to their wings. And use them to flag down and show off to the females. Let's see if they're gonna You can see that one full zoom nearly now. Look at those dance, literally they're dancing. Look at me, I'm the best looking one. <laughs> I love nature. Little flies. Little flies in a pond. Still fascinating and really quite pretty. grass around that edge there is hidden the liner completely and it's already naturalising. So for something that's cost basically nothing apart from digging, it's not looking too bad at all. Milk snakes are hatching. Have a look at this little guy just poking his head out. Just broke the shell with his egg tooth and he's just thinking about what to do. If we're disturbing he'll probably go back in. Look at that little fella. So if you look around, you can see here, further over, really mouldy eggs. Have a look at those. <laughs> really mouldy. It's often not always a worry. If you've got a good clutch of eggs and a couple don't make it and they start to mould terribly towards the end of incubation, it's usually best to leave them. Because if you try and separate them from a clutch that's actually stuck together, you'll end up breaking them and all the sort of bacteria laden insides will come out. And it often doesn't affect the healthy embryos next door anyway. So a little Pueblo milk snake just cut his way from his egg. He's been in there for 60 days or thereabouts. We've got two more clutches of these to go this year. Lots of babies then. Apricot phase and normal phase. And we'll gradually find new homes for those over the autumn and winter. Gorgeous little things. Just have a look at what they look like when they hatch out. We'll come back in a few more days, more than about a few more hours tomorrow, and we'll see them all hatched out and see how absolutely beautiful they are. Just hold that thought, come back soon. We've got another clutch of Pueblo milk snakes hatched in the incubator. We've left them in there for two days since the first one hatched to let them all come out and keep the temperature and humidity the same. And now we're gonna put them in a temporary container. Because, generally speaking, until they've shed their skin for the first time, which will be over the next few days, they generally don't eat, so they're not likely to eat each other. And then we'll split them up and put them in individual containers. And these are some chunky babies. Now, strangely, there's some apricots in here. And I wasn't expecting that. And what they'll do, they'll just burrow down into the substrate in there, the coir substrate and they won't do much at all for that first few days until they've shedded their skin. But look at these amazing patterns on these milk snakes. Look how many there are. Keep that one in there, Georgia. No. <laughs> now these problem milk snakes, when they suddenly get going, they're ultra fast. So we're gonna try and get them in there before they realize they're being hassled. That's some really chunky, here we go. <laughs> Really chunky babies, aren't they? Look at the amount of black on this one here. Uh oh, that's it, they've got lively. Help me here, Georgia, help me. Uh oh, it's happening. <laughs> They're escaping. Quick, quick, keep them in there. Oh my goodness. Oh no, one's got into somewhere else it shouldn't be. 
Hold on. Quick, put him in there. No! Oh, oh, oh nearly oh, lost him in oh. half. Would we get two? Who knows? Let's see how many more there are. Oh, after all that, there's one more in there. Check these eggs in a second, but they're all pretty empty. <laughs> oh no, I can't do it, it's so early in the morning. Look at that. Absolutely loads of gorgeous milk snakes. Now shed their skin, we'll get them all feeding, and once they've all had a few feeds, they'll be ready to go to new homes. Two more clutches to go for this season, and then that's all the milk snakes done, and it's just false water cobras, tortoises, and crested geckos still to hatch after that.